guys, it's me again, Randolph Boudou, and we're going to do some learning today. I know it's a bit different. You're at home. I am here, but let's make this meaningful. So put down the tablet, put down the phone. If you can get something to write with, get it now. Get a pen, get a paper, and let us begin. So look on your screen and tell me out loud, what are you seeing right now? That's right. You're seeing some children. How many children are you seeing there? Eight children. Good. Now you were able to say eight because you could count. But let's look at a different scenario. So what about if it is we didn't just have one group, but we had two? How many children do we have now? Can you figure it out? Yes, we have 16. What about if we had four groups? How would you go about figuring out the answer for that? You would do maybe 8 plus 8 plus 8 plus 8 to get your answer. But let's look at even another scenario. What if we did not just have four groups of eight children, but we had eight groups of eight children? And if we didn't just have eight groups, but we had 12 or even 16, would you still add to get your answer? Let's see how that would turn out. It would be a situation where we must add 8 plus 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 8. Wow. Now, tell me, is there anything that you have learned that could simplify this process? Anything that we could do differently to figure out the answer here? If you said multiplication, then you're definitely right. And that's what we're going to be doing in today's lesson. We're going to be doing a lesson on multiplication. Are you excited? Great. Let's move forward. So let's look at what you should know going into this lesson. You should know repeated addition. You should know how to multiply one digit by one digit numbers and two digit by one digit numbers. Also, you should know the distributive law. What we're going to learn today now, how to multiply two digit by two digit numbers and then different methods of multiplication. Let's move forward. So, what is multiplication? Tell me what you remember. Everybody has an idea. Everybody has something that they remember. So tell me now, I'm listening. I like what you're saying. Now let's hear some of the words that are normally associated with multiplication. We have times, multiply, groups of, multiplied by, repeated addition, and arrays, as well as the word product. Now let's look at a definition of multiplication. Multiplication is an operation where a number is added to itself a number of times. Now read that for me. Good. Do you understand it? Try restating it now in your own words. What does that mean to you? In your mind when you think about multiplication, what do you tell yourself? So let's look at a scenario. We have coming on screen a farmer. Now his name is Farmer Ancient. Could you think? Why we named him that? Anyways, Farmer Ancient had 11 baskets. They're now appearing on screen. What can you tell me about each of these baskets? Yes, that's correct. They all have the same amount of vegetables. Can we count how many vegetables there are in each basket? Very good. We have five. So let's read further. Each basket has five vegetables. How many vegetables does he have in total? How will we go about getting this answer? So we can go five plus five plus five, plus five plus five plus five plus five, but that's tiring. And we know about multiplication. So if we wanted to simplify this, rather, instead, we can say five multiplied by 11 
gives us 55. Instead of doing all that addition, multiplication makes it simpler. So let's learn some strategies that can help us multiply better. Let's look at a scenario. We have 8 multiplied by 2. Yes, I know you know the answer, but what we're focusing on here is the concept and how we can do things differently. So let's say, for instance, you didn't know your two times tables. Yes, I know you know your two times tables, but if you didn't, what could you do to figure out this problem? Maybe if we understand that two is made up of one plus one, we could then multiply the eight by one and then the eight by one again. Look it through. Do you understand what I did there? I understood numbers in the sense that two can also be stated as one plus one. And in this case, I know my ones times tables. So I took my eight and I multiplied it by one twice. So I got eight multiplied by one is eight. Eight multiplied by one is eight, giving me an answer of 16. Now there is a law behind this. Do we know the name of that law? There is coming up. My eight plus my eight gives me my 16. But again, I'm asking you, do we know what law we just applied there? That's correct. The name of that law is the distributive law. And distribute means to share. Can you think of any other synonyms for the word distribute? Feel free to write it down. Tell me now. Let's move forward. We have the same situation, 8 multiplied by 2. But let us say in this situation, we didn't know our 8 times tables. What could we do? We could understand that 8 is made up of 4 plus 4. And that now that we know our 2 times tables, we can simply say 4 multiplied by 2 and 4 multiplied by 2, which gives us again 8 and 8. And we get the same answer, 16. What law is it called again? It's the distributive law. And it's, it helps us to do mental multiplication better. Once we understand the parts numbers can be broken up into, we can multiply a lot faster. Let's look at another example. We have 9 times 7. Now let's say you didn't know your 9 times tables. How could we make the number 9? What different combinations of numbers can we use? I'm hearing you, and a lot of you all have some right answers. 6 plus 3, 5 plus 4, 7 plus 2, and 8 plus 1. So we could form 9 by adding these numbers. And now that we know the parts that make up 9, we could distribute 9, and knowing our 7 times tables, multiply by 7. Let's look. We have 6, and that 6 is multiplied by 7. 6 sevens, let me hear you. That's right, 42. Now we have 3 multiplied by 7. 3 multiplied by 7 is what? 21. Have we gotten our answer? No. What do we have to do now to get our answer? Which is 63. We have to add. Now add that quickly. 42 and add 21 to it. We get the same answer, 63. Good. Now we have another one, 5 plus 4. You saw what I just did. Now you do it quickly. Use your paper and your pen. Pen, so whatever it is. What's the first thing you should do? Yes, we go 5 by 7 and we get 35. What's the second thing? Remember what I did before? Correct. We look at the 4 now. We multiply 4 by 7 and we get 28. Are we finished? No. Now we add to get our final product, which is what? It's 63 again. Good. So I'm doing this one with you now, 7 plus 2, so that you can try the last one by yourself again. So we have 7. 
7 multiplied by 7 is 49. This one is easy. 2 multiplied by 7 is 14. 9 plus 4, 13. What do we do with our 13? Good. The 3, and we put the 1 to be added in the 10s. 4 plus 1 is 5, and 1 is 6. Did we get our 63? Good. Look at it. What did I do? Take your time. Now it's for you. 8 plus 1. Go through the steps quickly. Do it before me. What is your first step? Yes. 8 multiplied by 7. And what answer do we get? 56. What is the second step? Good. 1 multiplied by 7. And that's correct. 7. And we could even... This is easy addition. 56 plus 7. We get the same 63. And similarly, if we know our 9 times tables, we can break up the 7 into 2 plus 5, 4 plus 3, or 6 plus 1. Now, if you're doing mental maths, just answer me this and we move on. Which would be the easiest to deal with? Would it be 6 plus 1? Or 4 plus 3? Or 2 plus 5? Based on your knowledge of tables, it may be different answers. But for me, it's 2 and 5 because 5 is easy multiplication just as well as 2. So right away, 7 fives, 9 fives, and 9 twos are easy to figure out. So when you're doing your breaking up of the number, always choose the easiest numbers to work with. And there, if it is we use mine, we have 2 multiplied by 9, 18, 5 multiplied by 9, 45, and we get our answer, 63. One more, well actually just a few more, and I want you all to write these down, because these now are for you to practice with on your own. Seven times six, for me, I would break up the number six, maybe into three and three, that's easy tables. Eight times nine, right away my mind is clicking. Eight has four, can be made up of four plus four, that's easy. Five multiplied by three. Maybe I might just do that 5 multiplied by 3, or I can break the 3 into 1 and 2. 2 multiplied by 5, 4 multiplied by 8, and 12 multiplied by 5. Do you all have those written down? Great. Let's move forward. So now we're looking at a worded problem, and we're going to try to apply what we have learned. You read it for me. Tommy plants cashew trees in a field. He planted 32 trees every day for two weeks. How many trees did he plant in total? Now, what do we do every time we see a worded problem? We circle important words, and we underline relevant numbers. Now, I helped you all. I underlined one of the relevant numbers already, 32 trees. What words should we circle? Every day for two weeks. Let's think it through. How many days does that give us? Did they say weekdays? No, they said weeks. How many days are in a week? Yes, seven. But did they just say one week? No. And these are things we miss sometimes. So think it through carefully always. Read once, read twice. Two weeks gives us what number? Correct, 14. And they're asking us now, how many did he plant in total? So what are we looking for? A product, yes. What product are we looking for? We have 14 days, and we have 32 trees. So our sum should read 32 trees multiplied by 14 days. Do you think you can do that? Then let's try. We have 32 and 14. Which is the easier number to break apart? Let's look at the 14. And we know that 14 could be multiplied by, could be broken up, sorry, into 10 added to 4. Yes? And we're using 10. Why? Do you remember what we do when we multiply by 10? That's correct, you just add a zero. So it's easy multiplication. So let's look at what happens here. 
we have 32 multiplied by 10. That gives us 320. Then we have 32 multiplied by 4. We can go to our working column very quickly. We have 2 4s are 8, 3 4s are 12. That 12 goes outside, 2 in the 10s, and then that 1 comes in the 100. Yes? Are we finished? We have 320 and 128. What do we do next to get our final product? Correct. We add. And when we add, we get 448. Check it now quickly. I'm waiting for you. Did you get 448? Excellent. So what we just looked at was doing it horizontally. And you all did an excellent job. But let's look at it a different way. We can work this same sum out vertically. Now, don't be afraid. Take your time. Look at what we're going to do and see how it's very similar and it's easy and it makes you working on multiplication sums even easier. So we had our 32 multiplied by 14. And we understood that 14 was made up of 10 and 4. When we multiplied our 10 by 32, 32 by 10, sorry, we got 320. Now let's look at the vertical alignment. We have our 32, and we can multiply it first by that one digit in the tens column. But answer me this, what is the value of that one, that tens digit, sorry, that one? What is the value? Is it one? No, the value is 10. Now look back to where we did it horizontally. When we multiply by 10, what did we do? We just added a zero to the 32. Now look at this and look carefully. We can look at our first step in multiplying horizontally as multiplying 32 by 10. And the first thing we do is we just add a zero. But let's look at where we add that zero. We add it in the ones column. And every time, for every single horizontal sum, before you multiply by the tens digit, you just add, shout it to me. I didn't hear you yet. We just add a zero. Good. And then after that, we multiply by the digit as normal. So we say two multiplied by one is two. Three multiplied by one is three. Did we get the same 320? Yes. Now that wasn't so bad. Let's go again. Have we finished with that number 40? We dealt with the 10 part of that number. Is there another part? Yes. And just to recap, because I don't want you all to forget, when we multiply by the tens column, we add zero to the ones column and then multiply by the tens digit. And we're looking at it again. You saw that? Two multiplied by one gives me two. Three multiplied by one gives me three. Good. Now, I was asking you just now, what is the other part of 14? It's 4. And when we multiplied the 32 by 4 earlier, we got 128. Now, let's look at it in this way. We don't have anything here to do special except multiply 32 from the 1s and then the 10s by 4. So we get 2 multiplied by 4 is 8. Let's look at that. And then we have 3 multiplied by 4. That gives us 12. Tell me about that 12. Yes, that 12 is made up of 2 10s and 1 100s. So do we put that 12 in the 10s column? No, we don't do that. We put the 2 in the 10s column. And the 1 goes in the 100s column because there's nothing more to multiply. Are we finished? No. What is the last thing we have to do to get our product? We have to add. So add that quickly for me now. And let's check and see if your answer and mine is the same. We have 0 plus 8. That gives us 8. 2 plus 2. That gives us 4. And 3 plus 1 gives us 4. So our answer is 448. 
Do you all understand what we just did there? Great, I think you all did a good job. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave some more questions, some more sums for you to work out on your own. Write them down quickly. And next time I meet you, we're probably going to go through them and see if you got them correctly. Remember, we have certain numbers to look at. So we can look at 13 as 10 plus 3. We can look at 35 as 30 plus 5. We can look at 15 as 10 plus 5 and 48 as 40 plus 8. So that it, that's it for us today. Until I see you again, keep good.